Good afternoon, my name is Ruben Marino and I'm going to be the teacher of the practical part of the thermal model. Uh, let me introduce you to a brief introduction and explanation of this thermal model using pattern in Nestron. The first thing that we have to think about is uh, on which cases should a heat transfer analysis be performed. The, the answer is when the solution for the temperature field in a solid or fluid is desired and the temperature is not influenced by other fields, a heat transfer analysis is appropriate. And now uh, we can see which types of uh, modes of heat transfer uh, could, be, um, could be modeled on MD Nastrin and pattern. The first one is the conduction, the second one the convection, and the third one is the radiation. Now uh, let's go and make an explanation about this mechanism of heat transfer. The first one, the conduction. It's uh, when the heat is transferred through a material and this, uh, this mechanism is governed by the Fourier equation where the uh, thermal conductivity is, is the variable and is, is different from each material. Now uh, we have the convection that is a heat transfer between a solid and a fluid. We can simulate the natural or free convection and a forced convection. This, this heat mechanism uh, is governed by this, this equation, the, this one, and the variable in this case is the uh, convection coefficient. And uh, the last a mechanism of heat transfer is the radiation, is the energy transferred through a free space, no intervening medium, or from one surface to another. So we can simulate an ambient uh, radiation to space or enclosure, to is uh, representing an enclosed radiation system. And in this case, the equation that governs this mechanism of heat transfer is this one, and this equation has two. Uh, variables. This one is a factor that depends on two different variables. The first one is the emissivity and the second one is the view factor. And the other variable or constant, as everybody knows, is the constant of Boltzmann. And here we can see the different type of mechanisms of heat transfer. Now, uh, uh, we have here the, the ribbon of pattern where we can introduce the properties of the materials. As we can see, we can introduce solid properties, fluid properties, and also uh, we can um, introduce phase changes and heat generation. Then uh, we can see the element properties. Uh, there are uh, four type of element properties depend on the type of element that we are using for the model. The first one, the first type is zero D properties, where we can simulate a conductor or a capacitor. Second one, the two D properties, where we can simulate the shell, bending panel, membrane, or extensive solid. That means a six symmetric solid. It's an abbreviation. The third one, the one D properties, we can simulate a conductor, capacitor, beam, rod, or flow tube. And the fourth one, three D properties, just to simulate a solid uh, in three dimensions. Here we have the, the thermal loads that we can introduce. The first one is the temperature. We can introduce an initial temperature or a boundary temperature. The second type of thermal loads is the convection. We can introduce a convection to ambient, flow tube to ambient, a couplet advection, convection, sorry, a couplet flow tube, and a couplet advection. The third one is the heat, where we can introduce a heat with normal fluxes directional fluxes no, as a novel source, uh, as a volumetric generation, and as a total heat. And the, four, the fourth type is the radiation. We can introduce a, radi a radiation to the ambient space, ambient nodes, and enclosures. That means enclosed system. 
Uh, here we have the fields that fields are used to store uh, different type of of functions that are going uh, to govern the different uh, thermal loads. We can create a spatial field using a PCL function, tabular input as a table, a uh, general way using uh, another type of function defined by the user, and uh, using FEM, nodes or elements. And second type of field is the non-spatial field, and we can introduce it uh, within a tabular input or general using an equation. As everybody knows, in thermal analysis with the finite element method, the degree of freedom of the system is the temperature. So if we want to introduce a non-spatial field, uh, here we can see the different variables that we can introduce. But in this case, uh, the frequency has no sense in, in thermal analysis, displacement and velocity. Now, uh, let's talk about the the uh, different solutions that we can obtain uh, from MD Nasrin. First of all, we can run a steady state analysis using SOL 153. If we want to run a transient analysis, we can use the SOL uh, 159. And if we want to uh, run a nonlinear analysis, we can use the SOL 400. The last one, fourth one, is the thermal stress analysis using the SOL 101. This thermal stress analysis uh, is not available for the for the uh, thermal solution type. That means that we have to change the solution type to structural, and then uh, run a steady state analysis. We are going to see uh, we're going to see this procedure later. Here we have an example. The first one is a heat exchanger. We can see that uh, in the upper side, with the upper surface of the heat exchanger, we have a play, apply uh, uh, a heat, and uh, this heat exchanger uh, conducts, uh, conducts a fluid that has an initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, uh, has a mass flow rate of 8.3, and the other uh, material properties of the, of the plates that are the, we, we need the thermal con conductivity, a specific heat, density of the material. And uh, this, this model gives us a solution like this one. We can see how the fluid uh, is heated by the heat applied on the upper side of the heat exchanger. And as the, as the fluid flows, it gets warmed and also the, the upper side of the heat exchanger gets warm. The second example, here we have a tube that uh, consists of three different materials and is, uh, has a fluid inside of it. This model is, uh, has a 3D geometry, but it could be simplified using the, uh, axisymmetric, uh, an axisymmetric model. That means uh, it, this is possible because the, this geometry has a, a rotational symmetry. So here we can see the model. It's, it's, uh, in this case, if we want to apply the axisymmetric uh, solid, we have to place it on the plane uh, of the axis Z and X. And the solution obtained. Here we have, uh, we have introduced a heat, the flow of the fluid, and how the, uh, this tube, the, the tube section wall, is, is getting cold. And this example, sample three, is a thermal stress analysis utilities. This example tries to show how the uh, thermal analysis is needed to uh, develop some projects. In this case, uh, is a project that we have done at Ingeciber. We have a pressure vessel, and, and, the, and we have the operation conditions of this, of this pressure vessel. We can see them on this table. And with these conditions, we are going to develop a thermal analysis 
For the state one, we are going to take into account that the fluid has a temperature of 50 degrees. And for the state two, the temperature of the fluid rises till the 160 degrees. The geometry has been simplified to this axisymmetric model, placed on the, on the set X plane, as we can see in this image. And uh, we can see the, the, the welded joints uh, has been simulated using triangles. And the thermal loads applied uh, are an inner convection coefficient, one when the fluid uh, has a temperature of 50 degrees, and a second one when the fluid has a temperature of 160 degrees. And for each uh, thermal load, we also introduce the same outer temperature of 20 degrees. The results obtained from the thermal analysis are those ones that everybody can see. And once we have obtained the temperature, we have to create a field. This field is going to store the temperatures at each node of the model. Then, with this field, we are going to change the analysis type from thermal to structural. And once we are in the structural analysis type, we can introduce the structural loads. An equivalent pressure, an inner pressure of 0 0.5 bar, that belongs to the second state of the operator operation conditions and uh, constrained uh, to avoid the uh, rigid solid motion. And here we can see finally the uh, stresses obtained due to these uh, st uh, structural loads and thermal loads. With these uh, stresses now we are going to uh, develop a fatigue analysis of these welded joints. How? First of all, we have to know uh, the, the number of cycles, and we have also to create a simple stress cycle. That means that with the stresses obtained from the state 1 and the stresses obtained from the state 2, with that different, the, with this variation of stress, we are going to obtain that stress cycle. And if we can see here, this is a real image obtained from pattern fatigue model. And we can see that it's, it's just like a, like a signal that is going to be uh, applied for each cycle. And uh, pattern also need uh, S and curve to uh, have a reference of the uh, material the material, the, the stresses, the stress variation that the material can uh, support for each cycle. With those, uh, once we have uh, introduced all these parameters, uh, Patron gives us what is called the safety factor. And this safety factor is calculated comparing the, stress, the stresses obtained from S and curve with the stresses obtained from Nasrin in the last cycle of the, of the whole life. And uh, how these values could be interpreted? Okay, if, the safety, if, the, if this safety factor is higher than one, uh, it complies, so the structure is safe. And if the safety factor is equal or lower than one, the structure fails, that means that it's not safe. In fact, in this project, the minimum value is 12.9, so it's uh, higher than 1. So the structure uh, um, complies and is completely safety. And that's the end of the introduction. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, I have to say that we have developed uh, five exercises more than the ones that you can find in the MCS uh, manual. Uh, I think that they would be very interesting for everybody. Thank you for your attention.